In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate the pH of a solution made from a weak base ionization rather than a weak acid ionization. So if we take a look at the starting base compound, we see that it looks a little bit strange in that it's a sodium salt. Now, if we break this down, however, remember that sodium compounds are completely soluble in water, which means this is going to dissociate into Na+, and the cyanide ion, CN-, and if we treat this as our base, the conjugate acid of this compound is, of course, hydrogen cyanide, or HCN. We know that the sodium isn't going to do anything in solution because all sodium compounds are fully soluble, so this ion is just going to sit there, and the reaction that we're interested in is what the cyanide ion does with water, which we can represent as a weak base ionization like the one you see below. The problem is with KB calculations is that we aren't actually given KB in a data table because most KEQ values for acids and bases are listed in their KA form, which means we actually need to calculate KB by remembering the relationship that KA times KB of a conjugate pair is equal to KW, which of course is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So if we go to our Ka data table here, we can find that the Ka for the acid ionization of HCN, the conjugate acid, is 4.9 times 10 to the negative 10. So all we need to do is take our Kw value and divide this by the Ka value for cyanide's conjugate acid, HCN. Now, I've left space for you to actually write out the rounded form here, but I'm actually going to leave this in fraction form because it makes sense not to round our final answer until the very end. So if we take a look at the data that we're given here, we're told what the original concentration of sodium cyanide is, and because sodium cyanide dissociates completely and the mole ratio between sodium cyanide and the cyanide ion is 1 to 1, we can assume that our original concentration of cyanide is going to be 0 0.10 moles per liter. And since we're told nothing about the solution, that there is no hydrogen cyanide and no hydroxide in it, we can assume that these concentrations are 0, meaning that our equilibrium is going to shift to the products because there is no reverse reaction. Therefore, our change row is going to be minus x plus x plus x because the mole ratio between all of our reactants and products is 1 to 1 to 1. And all of a sudden, our calculation looks very similar to the Ka calculations that we saw in the previous video with the one exception. So if we use KB, we can solve for the concentration of hydroxide, which is equal to our X value. And if we take the negative log of X, we find our first problem. So the negative log of the concentration of hydroxide is going to give us the pOH. But as we can see, our question asked for pH rather than pOH, which means that we have a final step where we need to take 14 and subtract the negative log of x, the pOH that we find, in order to get the pH. But as long as we keep this in mind, it doesn't actually add that much time to the problem. So the first thing we need to do is construct our Kb expression, which is going to be the concentration of our products, hydrogen cyanide times the concentration of hydroxide, divide by our concentration of our reactants, which is the concentration of the cyanide ion. And as we've already established, this is equal to our Kb value, which would be here. So the next thing we can do that now that we have our workable Kb expression is to actually put all of our starting data that we have, our values from the equilibrium row in the rice table into the KB expression. So we know that KB is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. That's our KW value divided by 
4.9 times 10 to the negative 10. That's the Ka value of the conjugate acid. And we know that each of the concentrations of our products is going to be x. x times x is x squared. And then our concentration of reactants is our initial concentration, 0.1 moles per liter, minus x. Now, we remember from the previous video that because Kb is going to be a very small number, it's going to be approximately 10 to the negative 4 in terms of magnitude. So this x value here is not going to be a very large number. So we can make the assumption about the percent ionization. And if we assume that that percent ionization is less than 10%, Therefore, we can assume that this x value is insignificant and not going to affect the, I can spell properly, I swear, insignificant, um, and therefore not going to affect this original concentration significantly, and therefore we are going to ignore this x value here in order to simplify our equation. So that means that our Kb value is simply equal to x squared over, or I should write approximately equal to x squared over our original concentration, which means that if we want to solve for x, all we need to do is multiply both sides by the denominator, 0 0.10 moles per liter, and then take the square root of both sides in order to cancel out the x squared. So this would be equal to the square root of 0 0.10 moles per liter because we multiply this by both sides times kw, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14, divided by the Ka value of our conjugate acid, 4.9 times 10 to the negative 10. And if you put all of this into your calculator, you'll find that x is approximately equal to 1.42857 times 10 to the negative 3. I'm not caring about significant digits here because remember we need to take the negative log of x in order to find pOH and that's where our rounding would begin. So if we know that pOH is equal to the negative log of x, this number comes to approximately 2.8 when we round to two significant digits as our original answer had, but we remember that we weren't asked for pOH, we were asked for pH, and we know that pH is equal to 14 minus the pOH, which would approximately equal to 11.2. Now, just to make sure that we're in the ballpark, uh, remember that we're calculating the pH of a basic solution here, which means that our pH value should be greater than 7 to indicate that we're dealing with a basic solution, and that is indeed what we see. So as we can see, there's very little difference between pH and pOH calculations or calculations of pH in acidic or basic solutions, the only main difference is that we actually need to convert Ka into Kb using Kw as we saw here. And keep in mind that when we're dealing with basic solutions, negative log of x is going to give us the pOH rather than the pH. So if you keep these in mind, POH calculations and KB calculations are relatively straightforward as well.